for a mighty man of God. Church, put your hands together for our big spiritual papa, Pastor Joe. Twenty nineteen has been really magical. Our theme for twenty nineteen was new roads and new rivers, and we've seen God make some breakthroughs in your business life, in your marriages, and that's what it's all about. That's what it's all about. God loves people just like you. We, our church, we try to keep it as real as possible. We, we, we are real people, so we are not religious. We don't try to play religious games. We are not into rituals. We are not into the traditional. Observance and 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 you know trying to be holy before God. No man can make himself holy. Only God can make you holy, because only He is a true and a holy God. So we don't play with religious games, but we believe in a God who is a supernatural God, a God who does miracles. And I'm so excited about 2020. I'm glad some of our Klang people are here. A lot of our people are away, you know, during the holidays. But I'm so glad that you are here, that you made it today. I feel that this message that I have is very, very powerful to propel every single one of you into the brand new year. It's going to be challenging, and sometimes it's going to be, it's going to test your your ability to be courageous. It's going to force you to be smart, to learn, to get wisdom. And and to apply that wisdom, so I feel this message tonight is very very important. Our theme for next year is what Pastor Noel was mentioning again and again. Our theme, as we sat with the pastors and all our campus pastors are here tonight, our theme for 2020. Is from Ephesians chapter three, verse twenty in the Bible, where Paul makes a, a benediction and he wishes it over the people. I wish it over every single one of you, married, single, children, adults, old people. We wish you all the blessings of God. It says, "For God is now able to do exceedingly abundantly above what you even ask or think, according to the power that works within you. God is able." To do far more, everybody say far more. Wow. That's what he's going to do in 2020 in your life. You will be unstoppable. The immeasurable riches of God's power and love is going to be upon you and upon yours. Sure, there will be challenges and giants and mountains that you will have to face, but you're not alone because God is behind you and God is before you. This is 2019, but this is what's going to happen in 2020. Let's welcome our new calendar. That's the theme for 2020. Come on, everybody! God is going to take you far more above what you can even ask or think, according to the power. According to the power. According to the power. According to the power that works in you. God is able. Everybody say, God is able. He is omnipotent. That means he's all powerful. So no problem with God. But he adds on by saying, according to the power that works, that works. So I pray that this message here today will propel you and I together into the new year. The Bible tells us, and this is documented. This is not fairy tale, lullaby stories invented by some mankind that just want to make up stories. But these are documented. They are journaled, and even till today, all these annals are kept in the historical archives of Egypt and around the world. These books were written by men as they watched what unfolded before them in history. They are not historical stories. They are documented proof that if God did it then, He'll do it again. So there are some principles that God has put down in the Bible. Where ordinary people encountered an extraordinary God. God wants to be your best friend. Your best friend can leave you. They might. Your closest partner, who who promises he'll never leave you, they're human. You can disappoint somebody by promises you have made. This is real life. Can can somebody say amen? This is real life. Talk about real life. Human beings are only human beings. The people who promise you 
if you altered your house this way, you will draw in the good luck. The people who said that to you, they're only human beings. They can have a heart attack tomorrow and die. Then what? But you can put your trust in a God who will never die. He is the eternal God. He lives forever. So you can bank on His word. And you can look into 2020 with confidence. You see, there was a certain time in the Bible, it was during the children of Israel when they were slaves. For 430 years, for 430 years, all they knew was the sound of the whip of the taskmaster. All they knew was pain and harassment and slavery and injustice and harshness and bullying and death and murder. That's all they knew. For how long? Not four years, not 43 years, 430 years. So they passed it on generation to generation. You know, this is what our grandfather went through. And probably some of you have been told that. Don't try to be smarter than your daddy. That's what happened to your family. You have been cursed. So don't expect anything to change. I want to change. I want to tell you this. That is a lie. You are, you are a, today it's going to be a brand new year in 2020. I don't know what happened with your family or with your parents, but you're not your mother, you're not your father. We respect them and honor them. You are a brand new person in 2020, if you choose to believe that. Come on. So you don't have to make the excuse, well, I can't help it. My parents were divorced, so I'm going to end up my life handing down to my children a divorced life, a hurt life, an impoverished life, a sickly life. I want you to know there's good news in Jesus Christ. This is not hocus pocus or magic. This has been documented in the journals of history. So sometime in Exodus chapter 10, verses 23, 22 and 23, just before God took the children of Israel out of enslavement, God came down on the scene and said, I've heard my people crying and I'm bringing them out. So he was going to bring them out with a great deliverance. The Bible tells us, and in this chapter, it tells us that out of the 10 plagues, that happened in Egypt. This was the ninth, the second last plague. And it tells us that there was thick darkness. Thick darkness for three days. It was supernatural. It was not natural because even in the daytime, it was that dark. Nobody dared to move for the fear of darkness. Now, we can't imagine it because, you know, the best we can do is just kind of think how dark, dark is. But here's the cool thing about it. It says in the midst of all this supernatural darkness all across Egypt, the land where the Jews were staying in Goshen, there was light. Now, when you, I want you to think about that. Darkness all over Egypt, and then one Jewish person lights a candle, and everyone in that darkened area could see it. And when it was daytime, it was daytime, it sounds like, is this for real? Is this, now, this is the Bible, okay? During their time, while the, the, the Jews were there, before they left Egypt, there was light, the Bible says. But whereas in Egypt, when they lit a candle, it went off. There was no light during the day. And it was pitch darkness. And I'm telling you, this is, I think, prophetic. In the book of Isaiah chapter 60 and verse 1 to verse 3, it is almost prophetic, it is prophetic, it's not talking about the end times in heaven. It's talking about 2020, quite possibly. I mean, just read the news. You just have to read your social media. Things are bad. Young people today are jaded. They are angry with the government. They are angry with everybody because failed promises and so on and so forth. They are fed up with the status quo. And so there's darkness. So people are committing suicide. People are going to clinics to get pills for their depression. People are getting frightened and fearful. There seems to be no hope. And so they are trying to numb the pain. And this is what Isaiah 60 verse 1 says. Arise, shine, for your light has come. And the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. For behold, listen, deep darkness will cover the earth. And deep darkness upon the people. But the Lord will arise over you. There's going to be a clear distinction between you who have God in your home. That's why you don't want to mess around in your home. You want to make sure that the family stays close to God. For those of you who are followers of Jesus, 
that the Bible is priority. That going to church is not an optional, it's not just a habit. We're going to church on Sunday. It's a discipline. It's a discipline that becomes part of your life because you know the Lord is the light and there may be darkness all around us. I mean, you read the newspapers just a couple of days ago, again in America, in Texas, gunman walks in, shoots two people. It's happening again and again. And we see all this darkness, oppressive, you know it's supernatural darkness. But the good news is that his light is going to shine. Rise up, wake up. So that happened in Egypt. And the children of Israel had light. And then God said to them now, prepare yourselves, get your clothes on, get ready, you are leaving. But before you go, God through Moses instituted what they call till today in the Jews uh, tradition, the Passover. What is the Passover? Let's go through it very quickly. Because in a little while, we're going to be taking communion together. And once you take this communion the way you are listening to it today, your life will never be the same again. So it started, was instituted by Moses. And the deal was very simple. Get a lamb. Of course, everything they did to the Jewish people, it was ritual. But they didn't know it. They didn't know it was a metaphor, a picture of what was going to come. So their desire to have their sins forgiven was all outward. Inwardly, in their conscience, they were as guilty as hell. So they cried out for a savior. So for years, this was a practice. And you know what? It's still a practice in Israel. They would take an innocent lamb. A lamb without any blemish, which was a picture of the Lamb of God, Jesus Christ, who would come and take the sins of the world. You understand what I'm saying? So they took that little lamb and they would slit its throat in one of the veins that causes it to pass out. It was quite humane in that sense. The, the, the lamb didn't struggle and die. It slit the throat. And Moses was instructed, take hyssop, which is a kind of a leaf, and put the blood of the innocent lamb on the doorpost of the home. So on the right side, on top and on the bottom, there should be the blood of an innocent lamb. And if you look at it, if you can imagine, blood here, blood there, blood down. You put it together, it's a cross. It was a figure of the coming of Jesus Christ. And then everyone who believed that God was their redeemer was to stay inside. And they were to go through the Passover, the death angel was released. He was coming and whenever he didn't see any blood on the doorpost, he would enter that house and the firstborn will die. Now some of you already know this, I've said it before. You see in most Chinese homes, they've got the red cloth outside and across and down. They've already got that tradition way, 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 way many years ago. Let's come back to this story. What were the believers, the people who believe in God, giving them that protection before they came out? What were they doing? The Bible says they began to cook that lamb and they began to eat it. It was very specific how they were supposed to do it. Listen carefully. The clear instruction, you can see that in the book of Exodus, God gave them clear instructions that the lamb was supposed to be roasted, not boiled, not eating raw flesh, but it was to be burnt. Why burnt by fire? Fire speaks of judgment. Listen carefully. So the lamb's whole torso, and the Bible tells us very clearly, its head was to be eaten, cooked, baked, roasted, whatever it was, with fire. The entrails of the lamb, burnt, roasted, and the feet. Why did they go into all these details? I want you to remember that Jesus came into this world and he didn't just die. And so Paul very clearly tells us in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, he says, when you do not discern, when you eat and drink in an unworthy manner, not discerning the Lord's body, Many times we just lump it in. Okay, we take the wine, we take the bread. The blood is the blood. The blood of Jesus forgives you of all your sin, past, present and future. That doesn't give us a license to go on sin tomorrow. 
But if whatever has happened in 2020, I want you to know there's still forgiveness in Jesus Christ. But many times we just lump it in. Now there is power in the blood. Everybody say power in the blood. Even though we don't see the blood, listen carefully. Book of Revelation chapter 11 verse, chapter 12 verse 11 says they overcame the accuser, the, de the devil. And you face some devils in 2020. It is not your physique that's going to overcome your problems or your brains or your connections. Somebody said, uh, you know, I, I, I looked at one of my friends, his, his uh, message on Facebook. And he's a real friend. I love him. I admire him. He has the perfect body, his torso, he looked like, you know, I mean, he, and he's a martial artist, he's really a martial artist. And he's saying on his Facebook, I'm going to take out everything, I'm coming, I'm going to be like Mike Tyson, I'm going to drop the mic like Obama, I'm going to be like this, I'm going to fight everything 365 days, I'm going to knock out everything that stands my way. I want you to know, it's good to have human determination, good. It's good to be a determined person. But I'll tell you, one bug can bite your body and you're gone. Now, as a pastor now for 43 years, I've been into hospital, young people, old people, all kinds of healthy people. Now, you can try to make it on your own, you'll be disappointed. There is a provision that has been provided for every single one of us, and that is in Jesus Christ. So the head of the lamb was roasted, judged. I want you to think of every kind of depression, curse, suicidal talk, thoughts that you might have, mental illness that may have been passed down for generations. I want you to know that today, as you take communion, realize that they put a crown of thorns on Jesus' head. Now we don't just, the Bible says, do this in remembrance of me. It wasn't just like, oh poor Jesus, he died for us. No, you have to reenact everything that happened. You have to understand what he went through for you. This might be gory for you. As some people call the Christian gospel the gory, bloody gospel. Well, if there is no blood, the law says, there can be no remission of sin. If there is no blood paid for an innocent person, there can be no forgiveness of sin. So Paul says in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, he says, why is there some of you still sick and weak? And some of you die before your time. It's not, listen, traditionally you will say, oh well, because I've sinned. You know, none of us did never sin, right? All of us sin. That's why a lot of people are frightened to take communion. What if I take tonight, I die? You know, I become sick or weak. That is not what he is saying. He said, because you didn't discern the Lord's body. His blood was spilled. You do not overcome the devil by reminding the devil of the blood of Jesus. The devil knows the power in the blood of Jesus. You remind yourself of the blood of Jesus. That my house will be saved. My loved ones will be protected. Now you need to know that you don't have to shout at the devil and say, I'm covered with the blood of Jesus. Devil, you know, he knows that. But he doesn't want us to believe it. He doesn't want us to know it. So to some of you, take communion all the time. How come I'm still sick? How come I'm still weak? How come I'm still broken? Broken than the Ten Commandments, as somebody said. <laughs> always in debt. Always not enough. Have to cheat my way through life. That's not the plan of God for you. I'll tell you why. Because when the children of Israel took the, the, the Passover together, Psalms 105 verse 37. Psalms 105 verse 37. I want you to mark this down in your Bible. It says this. He brought them out with silver and gold. And there was none feeble among them. When they took the Passover and the Passover was over and they ate it, the Bible says they came out of Egypt not one feeble. Not one week. I am praying for you in 2020 as you reenact what Jesus has done for you. See, the lamb was just slit and it died and spilt his blood. Jesus Christ was not just slit. The Bible says he was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised 
He was a grown man, 33 and a half years old. They falsely accused him, stripped his clothes. Remember, he's 33 and a half years old, full grown man. He allowed them, the Bible says in Isaiah, I gave my backs to the smiters. They whipped him and lacerated his body. They punched him. He said, I gave my cheeks to the pluckers. This is in Isaiah. And they pulled his beard till his flesh tore. And then they put him on a cross. We all know that. Everybody knows that. In history, everybody has seen some movie of Jesus dying on a cross. But do you know what it really meant for us? It's not just going to church and getting a priest to give you a piece of bread and he drinks the wine and say some holy prayers over you. You have to reenact and understand what happened. If you don't, then there are blessings that are waiting for you in 2020. You might just miss. It says about the children of Israel, he brought them out with silver and gold. How many of you need a little bit of more silver and gold? I'm not just talking about silver. I'm talking about how many of you need promotions and elevation and probably a new job and, and, and you know, some kind of a raise. You want something better in your life. You don't want to scrape through life. Maybe your dad was like that. Maybe your parents were like that. You know, and if you had a good life, God bless you. Thank God for that. But God has got bigger things. He wants to bless you so that you, in return, can be a blessing to other people. You can say, I want to bless you. I want to be involved in what this church is doing to help the poor. So they came out, not impoverished, weak, like we see in the movies. The movie Ten Commandments, they were carrying the old people. Well, no, 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 no. It says not one was weak. Because when they came out, they understood that when they ate the entrails of the lamb, your body problems, your kidney, come on, your liver, your cologne, your bladder. Many of us are frightened these things. Will be, so we pop vitamins and vitamins are good. But the doctor who told you what's wrong with you, he's also human. He's the one who might pass away next. He's only human. Now, I'm not saying that you're going to live forever. All I'm saying is that you deserve a better life. And through Jesus Christ, the high priest, the Bible says in the Old Testament, the priest, he came and he did all these rituals. And in the book of, book of Hebrews, it says that these were dead, dead, dead works. Every kind of ritual was meant to be a picture of what Jesus has already done for us. But, but they used it for... One or two guys got it, like David. The Bible says when David sinned and he messed up really bad. In Psalms 51, David says, if you desired sacrifices, I would have given it to you. If you desired a burnt offering, I would have given it to you. But what you wanted was a broken and a contrite heart. David got the picture. This is not about just my outward demonstration of being a holy person. Light the candle, ring the bell, you know, put some incense on, then God's going to be, oh, I'm so impressed with that incense. Bring it on, man. That's, that's right. Oh, I'm getting high with a little help from my friends. Oh, thank you for, for putting up this, this thing on the altar next to Uncle Philip there because I do get hungry once in a while and I didn't tell you about it, that I own the whole world. You can't feed me. Now, I know we laugh, I'm not making fun of religion, but you know, because we don't know the full application that it is finished. When Jesus died on the cross, he said, it's finished. He didn't say, I'm finished. He said, whatever you need for life and salvation, I provided it for you. And it's not through your good works. It's not through your holy works. So Paul says, then why? Why eat and drink in an unworthy manner, not discerning the Lord's body? Today, I hope you get some kind of an understanding, but we'll be sharing. The Bible says, as often as you eat and drink of it, I want to encourage you. If, you, if you've got a family and you're unable to go to church, if you're the head of the home or you're the mom, you can serve communion at home. In our church, we serve communion to children. In our church, we serve communion to people who are not even Christian. Why? 
Did you know that the disciples were not born again yet? They believed Jesus, they liked Jesus, but until Jesus spilt his blood, they were not saved. Didn't get that, did you? You didn't get that, yeah. Yeah, they liked Jesus, but when he got crucified, they split. Because they didn't know any better, so would I. And yet Jesus broke the bread and gave them the wine before his blood was even spilled. Get that, Christians, get that. Because some people would say, how come your church served that person? You know, he was a Hindu and uh, he was a Buddhist. Yes, because Jesus didn't die for good people. Hello? Jesus didn't die for Christian people. Hello? So is communion only for Christians? Who said? Show me. Show me the Bible and the verse. I'll eat it. But he died for all people. He died for you. And he rose from the dead. That's the cool thing. He didn't stay dead. So remember that his whole body, in fact, in the book of Isaiah, it tells us, when Isaiah says, when you looked at him, his form, all right, his visage was so marred, no man ever looked like Jesus, ever, ever. Why? Because on the cross, not only did he die from his wounds, he sucked the sin of the world. Every wicked thought, every horrible action. He took this this lamb, not like that lamb that was slit, this lamb of God, whose sin washes and cleanses all people, took my sin, your sin, and he was judged. On the cross. That's why Paul says, don't eat and drink of this unworthily. Get a good picture. And I'll tell you what, you will leave 2019 maybe weak and feeble, but you're stepping into 2020 like the children of Israel did. You will find your legs that have been hurt and weary from walking and not achieving anything. Some of you got leg problems. Anyone got leg problems? Don't put your hand up. But I want you to believe God. He's going to heal your problems in Jesus' name as we take communion. The bread is just carbohydrate. That that Ribena, I wish it was real wine. Look, it's just sugar. The emblems are not a ritual. They are a symbol that his body was broken so our bodies could be made whole. The entrail speaks of all the parts that might be going through a mess and how you hate going to see the doctor. He says, oh, according to your age, you're quite okay, but what is the but all about? How many of you have been ill Constantly nagging sickness in 2019. How many of you want to enter into 2020 with good health and long life? I wish that for you, not just 2020, but in the years to come as well. I'm going to come down with my wife here and we're going to pray over the emblems that we are going to serve in a little while. And then the pastors, our campus pastors, will come to you and serve. Uh, If your husband and wife stand together, we want to pray with you. Family members, children with dads and mom. If you're single, just stay where you are. Get with other people if you'd like to. We'd like to come and just pray with you as we take communion. But first, let us serve you with communion. And when you hold that bread in a cup, it's not magical. It's not going to turn into the flesh of Jesus Christ and his blood, no. It's symbolic of what the Lamb of God has done for you. So you can walk like the children of Israel, out of your house of bondage for years. My family has been cursed, a lot of bad luck. My feng shui is not very good. I've been told by the, by the whatever, Bomo, somebody put a curse on you. What hell of a rubbish is that? you have the opportunity to let Jesus Christ set you free 
You will have a confident, not an arrogant, but a confident lifestyle. And God will promote you and your family. I want us to. You stand this side first. I stand here, okay? Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you that we can partake of these emblems today, representing the broken body of Jesus and his spilled blood. If you didn't die in our place, we will not have our deliverance. We will always be filled with guilty consciences. We will always be thinking, what have I not done right yet? Maybe I should have prayed more. Maybe I should have gone to that mountain. Maybe I should have fasted. Maybe I should have shaved my beard. Maybe I should have wore this cross. Maybe I should have done something. But Lord, we know none of this dead works pleases God. None of it pleases God. It's only through the blood of Jesus and His, and His work for us that we are saved today. Amen. And we are made sons and daughters of God because of what you have done for us. So as our church partakes and everyone, every man, woman, boy and girl partakes of communion, don't exempt yourself, please. You might say, I don't understand. I'm not a Christian. I don't have a Christian name. Don't worry about all that. We are praying that God will do something through this act that you are taking by faith. We are praying that you will experience His presence when you go home today. And when you wake up in a brand new year, you will sense something is different. Something has happened. I don't know what it is, but I know some presence that is good, that is merciful, that is gracious, has come into my heart and come into my home. Father, I pray for your blessing to be upon your people as they partake of it in Jesus' name. Come, pastors, just go ahead and see. They will come and you just take a cup and a piece of bread. Just wait for a little while. Yeah. Love you, Lord. No one to be left out. Oh, your mercy never fails. You might say your children don't understand. Well, it's your job oh, to slowly teach them and raise them up as a parent. <laughs>
hold the emblems in your hand. These are called emblems. They are just... If you're sick in your body, listen, get ready to be healed. If you feel you've been cursed in your mind, if you feel you're tormented, you get depression, and you dare not tell anybody, we're not like the Westerners where we run to a psychiatrist. So you sit alone and you're frightened. I want to cancel that in Jesus' name by prayer over you, but you've got to believe that Jesus had a crown of thorns. Thorns speak of a curse upon your mind. The Bible says that he became poor so that we could become the richest of God. He, he allowed him, he chose to, to go through all that, not, not to be a pious person, but so that you can always say, I know who I am. You made a way for me. Without you, I can never do it on my own. I have no strength, I have no power. I have, no, I have nothing, no authority. But today, I can trample on serpents. I can cast out demons. I can tell the devil to go to hell. Get out of my life. Get out of my body. Get out of my home. Get out of my finances. I have that authority and you have it. But you've got to do something according to the power that works within you. It says far more. Amen. That's our theme, guys. 2020 is going to be exciting. It's going to be exciting. And many of you never knew that miracles could happen today. They'll just say it's luck. It was your luck. It's nothing to do with luck. God's got you. God loves you. So as we hold these emblems in our hands, we are saying thank you, Jesus. Would you just bow your heads and just say to the Lord, quietly in your way, thank you. Thank you for far more that I'm going to experience. Thank you for the washing away of my sin, my foolishness, my stubbornness. Thank you for uniting. For those of you who are married, pray for your family. Pray for your marriage. Healing of your marriage. Healing of your family members. If you're single, God's got a plan for you. You're not different from anyone else. And His plan for you is to be great in 2020. To give you a future and a hope. hope. Financially, every debt that you may be at hanging over your head, we ask for debt cancellation yes. in the mighty name of Jesus. Business, yes. business opportunity, yes. resources that we never thought we could have in 2020 as we hold these emblems in our hands. We are believing you, O oh God, for those miracles. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, we ask and pray. Go ahead and take the bread and then take the cup. God bless you. Do it believing. Do it believing God.